Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It is good to be back. It is good to be back. Um, all right, let's get into it today. Uh, Arislan De Lauder versus Triple G may be a go. It's going to be ordered by the WBA. But before we get into that, please share, like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog on all forms of social media. Quick Hits comes at you every day, twice a day, to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Um, please subscribe to our other channel as well, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube, Texas Boxing Scene um, on YouTube. All proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery. All right, let's get into today's show. Um, this is better late than never, isn't it? Uh, look, look, Triple G is 41. I'll be, be 41 if this fight were to happen. Um, it's, they have until February 23rd. Uh, to reach an agreement, otherwise it goes to to purse bids. Uh, this was announced yesterday, the eighth. Um, Triple G fought twice last year. He fought none in in, in uh, 2021, and he fought once in 2020. Um, he fought in 2019, took 14 months off at the end of 2020, took 16 months off, fought Marota uh, in 2022, and then came back five months later, and. Uh, you know, lost to Alvarez. Um, he, he looked awful in the first half of the fight and rallied in the second half of the fight. Look, Triple G is not what he was five years ago. He wasn't, he isn't what he was. You know, in, in, in the first Canelo fight, which is, you know, more than five years ago now, actually, you know, 2016, 2017, when he was putting all those wins together, you know, the big names he was beating, like he's beating up on welterweights like Kel Brook, uh, and he's beating all-time greats like Dominic Wade, David Lemieux, Willie Monroe, you know, the, the creme de la creme. You know, he, uh, talk about a manufactured fighter. And it, I mean, he was good. He was a good middleweight. They didn't have to do this. They could have gave him real live opponents. Um and Laura has been calling him out for the better part of a decade. Now he may or may not get his chance, well, but we'll get into that a little bit uh, because it's going to be a couple of options. You know, Laura's all down. He was 100% down for this fight. He would love to have this fight. So, I mean, Laura is, is down. Um, this is part of the, the WBA consolidation. You know, Lana is the regular champ. And, uh, um, Triple G is the super champ. Sorry about that. It, it gets rough. <laughs> it gets rough. Um, Lala is on a uh, four-fight winning streak. He, since he had the draw with Castano back in 2019, he's got wins over Ramon Alvarez, Greg Mandetti, Thomas LaMana, Spike O'Sullivan. Not the greatest names either. Um, the draw with Castano, he's got, after the loss to Hurd, he's got a win over Goucher. Uh, yeah, he's been inactive. He's been trying to get these big names. He's 39 now, uh, believe it or not. So you, could, you know, potentially have a fight between two 40 year olds at this fight. You know, depending on when this fight gets made. But set to go to purse bids uh, uh, on February 23rd if they can't reach an agreement. Um, so there are two possibilities, right? Glovkin and Laura could reach um, a step aside deal that would allow Triple G to fight someone else, namely Mungia. A uh, Golden Boy is really, really big on Mungia. They really want that fight. Um, and uh, that would be one option. The other option is, you know, Golovkin takes the fight. You know, so Golovkin's really going to have two choices, right? He, Because this is going to go to oh, – I mean, he, or, or technically he could vacate this belt too, but that wouldn't make any sense because he just vacated the IBF instead of fighting Esquivel Falco. So, that, I mean, you vacate both his belts. It's a possibility. That just seems like a long shot. I mean, I don't think that would happen. So, he's going to defend the WBA belt, which is why he gave up the IBF belt, I would think. Do you guys agree with that? I think he's going to potentially vacate both and do what? Go up to 68? I don't know. Uh, that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. But 
Um, Laura, uh, so, I mean, those are those, those are the two possibilities. If, if you look at it, Mugia and Laura, you know, this fight, I, I, Laura needs this fight, man. Laura has the worst luck of any fighter except for his countryman, Rigo. Um, they just don't seem to have a lot of love for the Cubans. Uh, you, you go back through his record. And to be fair, his two draws may be losses. To be fair. Uh, honestly, the, the Castano fight um, may be a, a draw. Uh, he got a draw with, with uh, Monterosian, uh, a technical draw, which he was winning. Um, and then he's got a draw with Carlos Molina all the way back in 2011 on Friday Night Fights. That was probably a loss. His... His losses, Paul Williams, Canelo Alvarez, are absolutely atrocious decisions. You know, he should have wins over Canelo. And he should have, uh, and Paul Williams. How much different would his legacy look if he had wins over Canelo and Paul Williams and Jared Hurd? He, he, he probably deserved the victory in the Jared Hurd fight. Like, I, I had my card. I don't know anyone who didn't, but it was super close. I, I had it as the fight of the year that year. That was, what, 2017, I want to say, 2018? Um, 2018. But he should have wins in all those losses, and his drawers should be lost. So he kind of has a weird resume, right? Like, But if he had wins over those guys, Hurd, Paul Williams, and Canelo, how much differently would he be viewed? He'd be a Hall of Famer for sure. So he needs a, he needs this fight. He needs a win over a legendary name, a great name, a big name. And I think we have that in Triple G. And I, I do think at this point in their career, although I think at any point in their career, Laura would win. Because Laura's got dynamite in the left hand. He's obviously the much, much, much more, you know, the much classier boxer, way more skills, faster, sharper. You know, he was just, he, he you know, and, and like in, he's not going to run. Run from Triple G. He's going to outbox him, stand in the pocket, and, and nail him with the left hand. You know, yes, he's going to move, but he's not going to run for twelve rounds. Um, you know, he's got lightning. He got thunder, I should say, in that left hand. So he he wants to deliver it. He's not going to just walk in the front door, right? But he's also not going to run. He's going to stand in the pocket. He's going to he's he's going to deliver the left hand, and then he's going to move, right? Um, I, I think Laura at this stage puts an absolute masterclass performance on a, on a, on a 41 year old Triple G. But remember, Laura's also 39, so he's not, I mean, he's old himself. Um, as far as what would this fight have looked happened, you know, if it happened five years ago, six years ago, don't know, don't know. I would have still picked Laura. I just think Laura is an all time great boxer. I asked Austin Trout, and Austin Trout's whatever. Charles, Herb, Cotto, who's who's the best fighter he ever fought? He said, without well, hesitation, Lotta. Lotta is the best fighter he's ever fought. You know, um, he, he's a master craftsman. He's, he's he's the sweet science personified, right? He you know he is the you know he's he, he's he's a chess master of this. Um, so. And he's shown as he's gotten older, he's more willing to sit down on his shots because he's got dynamite in that left hand, which is never what he counted on, right? Kind of like Marquez. Later in Marquez's career, he relied more on his power. And, and you're, you're seeing that now. Like, he, the, the, the knockout over Lamana was classic, and he's, he stopped Sullivan. You know, I, I still think Laura has more left in the tank. Laura is more... Diversify, he's more versatile. He can do more things than Triple G. But I really want this fight. Like I, I want it. I'm a Laura fan. <clears throat> Guilty as charged. I, I want Laura to get this win. He deserves it. He deserves to have a name on his on his resume. I think Laura Laura had a whole fame career. He just got robbed a bunch of times. He didn't get the wins he deserved. But let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. Also. Subscribe to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene, on YouTube, Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds from that channel go to autism research and recovery. Remember, Quick Hits comes at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day. It is February 9th, 2023. From Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.